The topic, T.Y. Hilton. The thesis, just how good is he? Let's just jump into it. We'll start things off with this play. It's zone coverage, and Hilton is going to be running a quick route uh, towards the middle of the field. He's going to try to get into a gap in coverage. Uh, Indianapolis has a tight end on that side of the field who's going to be running towards the sideline, so that could help clear up some of this coverage. Uh, but what's really uh, important to watch here is just the speed Hilton has in getting right to the goal line and then stopping right when he gets there. Watch how he's going to get there in just a split second. He gets open just long enough to make the grab. Again, you know, uh, the Chargers have some smart defensive players. They have guys who can run over and crash in and break up that play if they notice it. But, you know, Hilton just got there quick enough that they weren't able to notice it in time, even though they noticed it pretty quickly. And, you know, Hilton's quick acceleration and quick speed uh, has always been one of the best things about him. And it works in many different ways, not just down to field passes, but also, you know, short little passes like that. I actually think that Hilton is a really underrated red zone guy. I think that he is an underrated red zone guy, and he got a lot better at being a red zone guy last year, even though, as a whole, most of his statistics were down. He had about half of the snaps he typically has in a regular season, but pretty much all of his statistics were down. For example, just 501 receiving yards compared to 1,270 receiving yards the year prior. Um, but he did have five touchdowns, which is right around what he typically gets, which is notable considering the fact that he had about only half the snaps. One thing he was able to do is something like this, where he's going up one-on-one -on -one against Malcolm Butler, and he's running a route towards the sideline. It's something you see teams do all the time in the red zone, you know, get towards the sideline. Uh, basically, just the quarterback throws one that's in a position where either your receiver is going to make the catch or just falls out of incomplete. Uh, you know, it, it can be a pretty... Uh, low risk, high reward type play. Uh, and after the ball is snapped, watch how he's going to go about this, where he fakes as though he's going in and then gets to the outside. Just that one quick move. And again, running to the inside, also something he could, totally could be doing. They could be running sort of a slant route or a crossing route, get him over the middle and just rely on his speed to get open. And so Malcolm Butler, the guy who he's going up against, who, as we all know, uh, he can definitely play goal line defense here and there. Uh, but now he has to turn his head and face away from the ball, meaning that this is a huge advantage for Hilton. Hilton now has the, the ability to look back and see where the ball is, whereas had Malcolm Butler just instantly ran over, he would have had a couple extra steps, and it would have been easier for him to then turn his head back and knock the ball away. But he can't do that because Hilton is fast enough. You know, uh, Brissett is able to throw one up, and Hilton is able to track it and make the catch, and Butler never saw it because he had to try and get back all because of that first move, that one quick step. That's all it takes sometimes. And, you know, just a, a well-ran route by Hilton. I also thought this was a great well-ran route by him where it's going to be a cover three zone. Uh, and so basically the player who is going to be covering where uh, Hilton is going to be running is standing right next to him right now. And watch at the beginning of this route. You notice that the defender who he's going up against, he does a pretty okay job. At, I would actually say a pretty good job at staying right close to Hilton, so there's not much separation. If Hilton continues running the route the way he's supposed to, then he's basically just going to not really get open at all. So that Denver player doing a very good job staying close with Hilton. So now what does Hilton do? He could just continue running the route the way it's supposed to be, but it's probably not going to get open if he does that. So instead, what Hilton is going to do is he's going to kind of try to fake as though he's running an out route and then cuts back over the middle and look at how much separation he gets just from that move. Again, it's that's good route running of realizing the situation, realizing you're not going to get open. So making a move to get yourself open because the scheme itself didn't get you open. Sometimes you have to get yourself open. And they can also take advantage of his speed on other ways, like a play like this. Uh, it's going to be a screen pass. So he just takes a couple of steps back, catches the pass, and then runs. Uh, you know, and several players move out to block. And after the ball is snapped, Indianapolis doing a good job of getting people into area so that they can try and block. Uh, Hilton is going to just try and run. You know, there is clearly sort of a, a tunnel he can run through. And so the question is really going to be not can they pick up some yards on this play, but how many? I guess that's technically the question on every play, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's going to be, can he turn this into a big play? And he can because of his speed. He runs so fast that it takes a long time for somebody to get to him. Eventually, he just goes down himself to avoid a big hit. Uh, he, he probably could have gotten another, you know, seven yards or so on that play. Uh, so 
just the, you know, again, that speed is something you can really take advantage of in several different ways. I think one of the interesting things about Hilton, uh, if you look at him last season, and one of the reasons why you could say he had a down season, although I kind of wouldn't other than the injury, of course, is that his yards per catch were way lower than they typically are. I mean, he's typically a 16 plus yards per catch guy. Uh, You know, in the past five seasons, he's only dropped uh, if you don't count last season, the five previous seasons, he only dropped below 16 yards per catch in one of them. That was 2016, where he had 15.9 yards per catch, and he also had over 1,400 yards as a whole, so really good season from him. Uh, this year, he had just 11.1 yards per catch. It's a massive drop-off, and obviously, you know, the obvious variable that has changed is that he went from Andrew Luck to Jacoby Brissett, uh, which is definitely, in terms of deep ball throwing, definitely a, a pretty massive downgrade. And I do think that hurt him to a pretty decent degree. Uh, but he was still able to get an occasional deeper play in there. And I think he still clearly has it. I don't think he's dropped off. I think just the team around him uh, kind of hasn't been as good as it was in years past. Um, on this play, it's going to be uh, it's man coverage. Uh, it's cover one play. So Hilton and another receiver are running pretty similar routes. Hilton's route is the one where he's starting on the top of the screen, but going to move to the bottom of the screen. Uh, and what's really unique about this is how he runs this, where right when the ball is snapped, he looks over and he notices what's going on. And notice how close he runs to his own receiver. He's running. I mean, they could high five if they wanted to. They are right next to each other. And the reason he's doing this is because the player who he's going up against he now pretty much has no choice but to go right behind Hilton. He can't try to get to the, uh, further deep than Hilton, even though that's where he initially was. And the reason for that is because Hilton did a good job reading the play, knowing exactly how he could uh, sort of use that player as a pick deep down the field and get even more open. And while, uh, if we're going to be honest, uh, I think it's pretty clear that Jacoby Brissett probably should have still hit 14, uh, the, the receiver who's right next to Hilton, instead of Hilton. Hilton still got wide open and made a, a good catch, too, because it wasn't a perfect throw, uh, and he's able to make a big gain. Do I think that Hilton's you know yards per catch and just yards as a whole numbers could go up uh, with Phil Rivers as opposed to Brissett? Maybe. I mean, maybe. I think Rivers, you know, he has been a good deep ball receiver in the past. He wasn't great last year, but, um, you know, maybe that was just an off year for him. Uh, it's it's hard to really know, but I do think that with a good deep ball quarterback, Hilton can still uh, add that deep ball thing back to his game that he didn't really have too much last season. I mean, he's somebody that in every year of his career, not counting 2019, he had at least one catch of over 60 yards, whereas last year his long was 35. Uh, usually his long of a game uh, will be more than 35 for a lot of these things, which again, I think it's scheme. I don't think it's him. Uh, you know, he's 31. I think he still has a lot left in the tank. Uh, you know, uh, I like T.Y. Hilton. I think he's uh, still very good, still a number one guy. I just think that, uh, you know, they could use some, maybe some more weapons to take some pressure off of him and a better deep ball quarterback. Maybe they have that this year. We'll have to wait and see. But what do you guys think about T.Y. Hilton? Let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.